So I don't need any excuse to talk about uh, my love of old carts. Um, but, yeah. Recently, um, I, I just, as, as uh, if you follow Karting One for a long time, you know, we, you know we've been on this brand wagon for 15 years plus now. And, um, yeah, recently... If if you if you follow us on on Facebook, you'll notice that I've just designed some merchandise, um, and I did an old illustration of a photo I had of when I raced in 2015, and uh, yeah, it sort of stirred up the emotions again. So if you check, you know, if you if you check the link below, you can see the merchandise. If you fancy a t-shirt or hoodie design, um, it's all on there, and it help helps support the channel, all that kind of stuff. And it just got me thinking about that style of car and, and why it's so meaningful to so many cars and um, so yeah I the guy that took the photo um, that I used for the illustration James Hull and I got in touch with him because obviously I was using the the picture as a base and he sent me all the photos from that event that he took of me what I hadn't seen before and I got them this morning and um, now you get goosebumps when you see these pictures because I don't know what it is and I want this video really to inspire people around the world. If you get the chance to buy one of these carts, effectively it's a cart from, I don't know, what's, what's going to be the, the, the catchment area here? From maybe the mid-70s to like the late 80s. I have a particular fondness for the sort of mid to late 80s because I was born in 86 and my brother was racing then and those were the first carts that I saw. So if you have a chance to buy them, or, or get involved, I really, really recommend it, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, so I looked at these pictures, and it sort of gives me goosebumps, like because when you see a car that's without pods, and it's a hundred cc, so it's direct drive, it's air cooled. Um, for me, at least, they they kind of look a bit dangerous, and um, they look exposed. They look purposeful. They look like you know, pure racing machines. And, you know, obviously the center quote gets repeated and repeated and repeated a lot. But they're in, from a visual perspective, there's something so crisp. It's it's hard to put in words. Like you, you see behind me, that that the, the, the frame there that is, is the right car. That's the pit that's the car that was actually that I actually used in two thousand and fifteen. But if you actually see the, the OTK behind me with all the pods. Um Modern carts to me kind of look a bit soft. They look very big <laughs> and very padded. And um, there's something about those old carts. If you if you speak to anybody that's into sort of retro racing, like once you strip away all the, the, all the bullshit, what we really often get excited about is uh, the pre-podded era, really. As soon as pods start to come in, um, that was the beginning of the slide, you know, the descent, in, in if you, if for want of a uh, better word. Um, so as much as we idolised the 90s, um, when you really sort of dig, most of us, what we really get excited about is, is podless hundreds. And just visually, just for, just as an observer, you see the whole driver. Um, if you ever watched, if you ever were lucky enough to watch the race in like in the 80s, late 80s, and you, you, there's a few YouTube videos about that half decent, like the carts are so um, expressive, like you can really, the, the, it's hard to describe it. You watch it and you're more on the edge of your seat. Um, obviously, watching the World Championship at the night with a KZ or OK, the carts are fast, but um, there's a homogeneity to the way the the carts look and drive that yeah it, it, it doesn't in sort of evoke the same feelings of edginess um i know this sounds like me going oh the old days were better um i'm just trying to describe the sort of the feelings that you get you know and it's not the old days really because you can still you can still buy these carts you can still go and drive them so yeah, there's an edginess to them, especially with the old engines, you know, because if you're doing 19 and a half thousand RPM, you know, that you know, you do have to look after them and you got that ele that little extra spice where, you know, you're on edge. You're just always on edge. Um 
you know, and if I go back to the the sort of podded era, um, what we what we're in now, you never you never really you're never really on edge in the same way. And um, as as a viewer and as a driver, I mean, unfortunately, I don't hardly get to drive at all. This year has been written off pretty much, and next year is looking a bit shaky. So it's not fantastic, but. Um, yeah, as a driver, the experience, like racing, racing a podless car compared to racing a poddy car is completely different. Like when you're in the pack, like with a modern car, you know, you can get your elbows out, you know, and start, you know, nudge here and a nudge there, and you know, you might squeeze someone here. In, in a car, like like the car I raced at fullback, you know, it was five years ago, and then I did, I think the next year I did it Rover, the O play, I did it on a Cali. Not of right. Like, there's no room for, like, you can't shoulder barge someone and you know move them out of the way. Um, if you, you know, it's like a, it's like you're either super aggressive or you're complete wimp. <laughs> like, if you're anywhere in between, you're gonna end up on your head. And um, so, like, so from like a driver's perspective, it's it's. So it is the start. So you, your eyes are just pinned, you know. Um, it's it's so hard to describe, but it's it is in in my view, it's it's a better all round experience and um, something that we miss from today's scene. And I know that I don't want to talk about rose tinted glasses and all that, but um, really, this video is, is to inspire people, especially the youngins you know guys in their you know late teens and uh, early 20s who, who who might be sort of enveloped in the world of modern carts would even consider but um youth is always the way forward and there's something about these carts that you just i don't know there's just more purpose to it and i always felt that when i raced it it kind of when you walked into the garage and you saw your car and it's just like bare wheels you get like you know goosebumps and then you you put it down at the start of a of a race and it's just like you just see the the wheels the frame the engine and that's it and you're ready to bump start it and you get in your you know you get a little bit nervous because you think you know i hope it starts and but it's so light oh man the feeling is just it's it, like you know, I've raced the Rotax and, and KF and all that kind of stuff. Before a race, you kind of feel a bit, yeah, you know, you sit in your car and you push a button and it's all right. But it's not the same. It's not the same. And um, it's those sort of intrinsic qualities that you don't really value in the same way as a market you might value the convenience of a push button start but to me what you gain with that kind of thing is you lose with emotion you know and it's hard to quantify that um so yeah i just wanted to talk i just wanted to talk about it because i know for some people um they might look at the old carts and or not even notice them you know and um you know hopefully next year with with retro race and the formula a boys i can get maybe something in i don't know how if that's even going to be possible but um I would like to get back on track and and get driving with those guys um, because I do miss it immensely and I've got this OTK Rotax behind me and there's a kind of there's a brute utility to it this sort of car not the frame the one behind it there's a there's, there's like a brutal utility to this sort of car in but it lacks any sort of emotional content <laughs> as Bruce Lee would say and not yeah, it, it kind of it, you do you do crave that feeling, you know. And uh, what's quite funny is on on a purely if we talk about utility, um, and I was thinking about this when I was going to do the video. You know me, I don't I don't really script these things. I just go and riff. Um, uh, I've got a hole at the front pod and there's holes on the, the, the rear bumper, right? And for that to be, to pass scrutiny, and I'm probably going to have to get a new front pod and a new rear pod. That's like a hundred and odd quid. Even if I get it second hand, let's say around sort of 80 to 100 quid. And the cart's big, so, I, you know, I'm going to need a van. And it's just like, for all of this utility and modern cart in it, it's actually pretty difficult to, to lug this 
large cart about. You know, it's work. You know, you have to take pods off. You have to you're doing stuff constantly to fit this cart in a space to take it to the to the cart track. Whereas my old hundred, tiny little thing. I've got no pods to worry about and all that kind of stuff. It's super light. You know, give me a 106 Peugeot, I could get to the track, and it wouldn't wouldn't even bother me. Um, so, yeah, it's like we live in this era of, you know, trying to make things utilitarian almost, and in a way they become less convenient. So, yeah, I just I just saw these pictures, and I, I just thought, wow, I just want to talk about it because. It's a feeling that I can't really describe. But when you when you're racing these carts without pods, with an engine that's screaming its ass off, like it's just a whole different level. And I wish more people could really experience it because obviously with the the historic hundred scene and all that, we we focus so much on the nineties, and that's really what helped drive its success in the early years because we had all the YouTube, uh, not YouTube, all the stuff from Eurosport that was on YouTube and that helped drive the nostalgia and, and the emotion in people but if you talk to us who were there who were founding all this what we really, really loved was the sort of the 80s era um, and the late 70s um, that's what we were really about, you know and um yeah, yeah. If you if you get the chance, you know, go for it, and you won't regret it. I think it's like if you if you really want to feel like a carter, um, having one of those carts or of owning them, you know, it's like um, I guess it's I guess it's the Alfa Romeo of the karting world. You know, maybe that's a bit elitist. I don't know, but um, yeah, I wanted to riff. I wanted to rant, and um, I, like I said, thanks to James for those those pictures. Because it sort of rekindled something in me. You know, I'm sitting looking at this OTK Rotax and I haven't been able to do anything with it this year. I tried to build a car, but we ran out of money. And, you know, you're sort of going on this old slog trying to make something work. And then you see something like that and it sort of just goes, ah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Whatever that is, whatever that sparks in me. You know, there's, I've never looked at those pictures or never looked at those old carts and had any whiff of doubt. You know, they are insane. And they are more dangerous. But they have more meaning for me anyway. Um, and I think artistically as well, I think they're more expressive. There's so many more different engine shapes and, and, and styles. You know, we're not all just racing the same homogenous lump. Um, because I have, you know, nobody's nobody's starting a retro Rotax Max series, are they? Um, and I don't think anybody will. So, yeah, like I said, I'm. I just wanted to riff, and if you're with me, what 15 minutes into this video, thank you for watching. Make sure you check out the the merchandise on Teespring. Hopefully, we'll do so. I'm not the greatest designer in the world. Um, but I hope, I hope I've got some more ideas coming up. So if you keep an eye out, maybe you see a t-shirt design or a hoodie design that you like, and uh, yeah, it'd be a good Christmas present and all that shebang. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me rant. Um, and uh, yeah, let's uh, see you soon.